All right, hand's pretty dirty. I'm gonna try to clean it off a little bit. Okay, let's talk about these poor old windows. Look at this chub chub, Beep. all sleepy. Today we're gonna be talking about my portholes. And if you follow along with the channel, you know, I'm in the process of renovating the van and I've got a big list of things. And one of those things was to add some light to the van. So I went with portholes, super hip. Now I had found some 13 inch portholes portholes. They're not the opening kind, they're tinted. And I think I found mine on Amazon, but then I found a better deal on eBay. So I went with the ones on eBay. So to get started, I kind of had to work backwards. Uh, because I wasn't installing these windows before I put everything in this van, I was doing it two years after living in the van. I had to pull some stuff out. So I had to remove the wood paneling off my back door. Luckily, I was already planning on replacing those wood panels because I had gone with three quarter inch tongue and groove board and it's too heavy for those doors, but I'll get into that on a separate video. I was gonna go with something smaller. So I, I pulled all that stuff off and it didn't take long. Everything was just attached with some screws or removed them and then the glue on there. So I did have to take some time to get the excess glue that was stuck on there removed, but for the most part, it was pretty quick. Then it was time to start figuring out where I was gonna place these portholes. And during that time, I had made a template off of the exterior facing portion of the window, which is 13 inches, because I needed to see what the 13 inch looked like versus a 12 inch. That makes it 13, but the inner portion, the actual ring that I've gotta cut out, is 12 inches. You could do the 12 inch because that's all you need to cut out the hole, but I wanted to see exactly how it was gonna look where I was placing it because I didn't want it to be too high or too low, but uh, it would speed up the process if you just did 12 inches. Man, am I butchering this. Okay. This is my 12 inch ring, and then the outer one from here to here is 13. So I've gone and found my center point, which is this one. Same thing, roughly there. I found where the center of the door was, same here, and then I dropped them down about three inches, about two and a half, three inches. So now I'm just gonna punch my holes through with a drill bit and then use this template, like pop everything off and then use the template and trace my ring. You can pop a center hole through with a drill bit. You don't have to go huge and then from there, you could trace around that circle. I'm just using a Sharpie to trace this. And you could do it directly to the van because you're gonna be cutting that out. And then if there's any little like excess Sharpie marks that are left there, it's gonna get covered up with the outer ring of that window. Then it never hurts to go back and double check and even triple check all of your measurements to make sure everything's right where it needs to be before you go ahead and start cutting. I'm gonna tape it up. Make sure you tape off your edges because you don't want your jigsaw to scrape up the paint on the door that's going to be visible. I think Archer's outside by the door here. Actually, he's never in these build videos, so. Arch! Hey. Here he is. He's been outside being an adventure cat. He's nice and cold. How was it outside? He's got his jingle bell on too. So if you're gonna cut into your van with a jigsaw, you need to put like a pilot hole in there so you can get your blade in there and start your cut. And for some reason I had a crazy brain fart where I was like, I'm gonna take a hole saw, pop a big hole in the center, and then from there I'm just gonna work my way out and then, you know, cut it, which is way more work. And like right when I started to do it, I was like, what am I doing? And I pulled it out and I went and just grabbed a big enough drill bit to fit the jigsaw blade I had and I popped a hole as close to the edge of the circle as I could and then took my jigsaw and started to cut. Make sure you have like a metal cutting fine tooth blade. It helps to cut through sheet metal and then be able to like 
carve because you're doing a circle. So you're just constantly turning with it. You're not doing a straight line. I had to cut through the sound deadener and insulation and cutting through sound deadener, it oh, sucks. Shit. Like it gets hot, okay. it goes everywhere. That sound deadener is everywhere now. And it burnt the shit out of my face. And it will gunk up your tools and your blade. So if you can do it beforehand, that's great. You can always do it after like I'm doing. It's just gonna be a little more difficult. One little tip is just before you go and start cutting with your jigsaw, make sure your pilot hole is big enough to fit the blade so that you're not fighting it. Hey, Greg. Yeah. You wouldn't happen to have another one of these blades, would you? I like forced the blade in and it worked on the first one. But on the second one, I snapped the blade right off the bat. So I had to go get another jigsaw blade and continue on. So just make sure you have enough space. Don't force it. Once you have your holes cut out, you can go and smooth your edges out. And I just used a sanding wheel on my grinder. I think it was like 40 grit, because that's what I had. And then once you have that, you have to seal up your exposed metal edges. And I have used Flex Seal in the past and I have had good luck with it, so I grabbed some more. When I went to spray it, it, it was quite a bit more than I had wanted to come out and it was a bit messy and runny. So I just went and got a sponge brush, sprayed it on a piece of scrap and then just like blotted it on. But since I was doing such a small thin coat, it dried within like a half hour. But I used that drying time to go and cut the insulation out because I still didn't have enough room to fit the inner mounting ring for the window. And so I just took that up, traced around it, and then cut it out with a straight blade. It was super easy. I bet it'd be a lot harder if you have like spray foam insulation in there. Uh, but because I just had like closed cell foam board, it was really easy to cut out. Boom. It was about 30 to 45 minutes and the Flex Seal was dry to the touch. Now, it doesn't cure for like 24 to 48 hours, but uh, it was good enough for me to go and throw another coat on there really lightly just to make sure I had everything covered up. And uh, while it was drying for the second time, I put some butyl on the outer ring of the window. Take some of this butyl tape, butyl rubber sealant tape, and wrap it around the rim of the mirror. And you use butyl to get a, like, a waterproof seal. And again, you just line it around the window there. But once that was on and the flex seal had dried, it was time for me to mount the windows in. And before you go mounting anything, you should clean the surface down. Like I pulled all the tape off. I took some all-purpose cleaner and wiped it down with a rag. Rocky wound it up. What are you doing? So I snagged Greg, he came over, he held the window into place, and then I went on the opposite side with these Phillips head little self-tapping inch screws they give you and the inner ring and tried to drill them in. And there was no pre-drilled holes. It was just this little track that the screws would drill into and then bite on. And sure enough, I could not get them to bite. I got one to bite and then the rest were just spinning, 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 spinning. So my light died. I was gonna run to the hardware store to get some new hardware. These little screws they give you, these little tappers, machine screws, they are terrible. And I could not get them to bite. So Greg had these ones, they're a little bigger and they seem to have more bite. I'm using these instead, which are uh, a hex head rather than a Phillips. And you can actually put some leverage behind it. Once we switched over to our own screws, we were able to like get one to bite and then I'd go to the opposite side and get one to bite. Like when you're tightening the lug nuts on your tire, you know, across from each other on opposing sides, boom, 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 all around. And then I went back and just tightened them up until they were nice and snug. You don't wanna just go in a circle because you know you might get uneven tightening. And then you gotta be careful too when you're tightening these things down, like don't go crazy on it. Take your time. Uh, it's probably better to, to hand tighten them if you can so that you're not like pinching 
the metal because you'll get indentations real quick if you go too tight on one side. Two portholes up. Now I'm gonna cut off the excess. So all that little butyl that's probably still up there on the edges that have now oozed out as it's tightened down on itself. It slowly like seals itself in and then you go and you trim the excess butyl off. You can cut it off the day after and you might have to come back again in a week and then trim it and clean it up uh, another time. And it's really easy. You could just use a straight blade, go along the contour of the window and then just roll it off. Let it be. All right, I'm gonna cut it. So that was it, man. I had windows, but that was the easy part because I had already done windows before. The hard part, the part that I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna do was the interior trim. But before I get to that, I figured I'd use this time to give a little shout out to some Patreon members. I'm just gonna do five right now because I haven't done this before and I'll work my way through on different videos. I wanna say thanks to Maria Flores, Evan Bergen, Bergen, not exactly sure how to say your last name. And there's Anthony. There was no last name listed with Anthony. Uh, I do know who Anthony is. I don't know if he just doesn't want his last name said. So just Anthony, thanks. Justin Beams, that's a pretty easy name to say. And then Phil Twoz, Twozy, Twoze, is it Twoze? I'm not exactly sure, but thank you all for supporting me through Patreon. Okay, back to it. So after I had placed my new paneling, uh, which again, I'll be making a separate video on that, I needed to figure out how I was going to trim around my porthole windows. You know, it's not like I could just make a simple ring and then place it right on the paneling. There is a gap between the paneling and where the window is mounted to the door. So you can see where my insulation and just the raw metal and sound deadener is. So you have to fill that gap in too. And it's about two inches. So I needed to find a way to make this custom trim ring. And I looked online trying to find something that was pre-made and I couldn't find anything. So if you guys might know of something or have a link, tell me, leave it in the comments and then I'll link it in the description because I couldn't find anything. I also didn't look super hard, but Maybe you know. I'd also seen photos of other people's vans where they had portholes in the back and the interior had nice wood trim rings on it. And I had some ideas on how I was gonna do it, which was gonna require some extra wood and some gluing and then some finishing and stain. It was gonna take more time. I was trying to come up with an alternative. One day while I was working in the shop on everything, our friend Chad came in and I told him my dilemma and he walked away for like, five minutes and came back with this piece of ductwork. And he came up and he's like, you know what? It's the perfect size. I'm a little worried while you're driving that you're gonna get that noise. And this is just galvanized steel and it touches the frame of the window. And so I might have to do some type of little gasket to dampen that, you know, to keep them from bumping up and uh, rubbing. So we decided to go with it and my dad went to his shop and found some plastic stuff. And I wish I could tell you I knew what it was. It was just this clear plastic. It had a little channel in it and he wrapped it around all the edges and then glued them in place and painted them black and then they worked. So we put it in place. I just set it in with some one inch length sharp point lathe screws, lath screws. So we had four holes, boom, 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 pinned them in and that was it. You know, I had porthole windows. Not perfect, but it's okay. And now I have more light in my bedroom. So there you go. Two portholes, extra light in the bedroom. I don't think it looks too shabby. I did cut little reflectic circles out so they can block out the light. I like it. I like having the extra windows. I like having the extra light and Rocky and Archer get to peek out the back windows now uh, a little easier. I'm hip. I'm hip, cool van person with porthole windows. I hope this was helpful a little bit in some way to some people and I appreciate everyone who's watched all the way through to this point. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. I'll get back to you. Make sure to like, subscribe, bell thing. And if you're feeling super generous, jump on Patreon to support the channel or grab some merchandise. We have like three small shirts left, some stickers and air fresheners. And thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>
Can you see Rocky sleeping down here? Oh, you opened your eyes. You heard me say your name. I'm not sleeping. I wonder if you could see this pan I set here. Uh, cool. All right, done.